Father, we thank you because of coming to your presence again today to learn at this our soul intercessory prayer where you want to develop us for to be key members of those who are winning souls for you to be those who are passion through the holy spirit to actually speak to people and with the compelling authority of the holy spirit bringing them into jesus by their heart being converted and lord externally they are manifesting the power of the lord thank you because you have brought us together to learn at your feet O Lord, Rabbi from heaven, teach us as we listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to our soul intercessory prayer. Uh, it takes place by 3 p.m. like this. And by the grace of God, we are here representing uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as he has given us the mandate to go into the world. And today we are going to read and pray, study and pray learn and pray so that we can apply what we're learning to in the field of evangelism god bless you as you follow us we are reading from matthew chapter 5 1 on to 3 the topic today as we are reading matthew chapter 5 1 to 3 that's the beatitude beginning of the beatitudes now learning from jesus the rabbi from heaven that's the topic of today so it's good to learn from the rabbi, the master Jesus, who is from heaven. Now let's see, uh, read from that Matthew chapter 5, from 1 to 3. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when it was set, his disciple came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. We thank God because of this particular reading. Now, before we go into that, we need to know, uh, how does he become a rabbi or what is, the, is he a teacher is now they even confirm it to us even from the word of god from their own their own mouth let's look at it in john chapter 1 and verse 49 nathaniel one of the people that are coming unto him to become a disciple answered and said unto him rabbi that is the name uh, but thou thou art the son of god thou art the king of of Israel, hallelujah king of king king of christian king of converted soul king of people that actually that are saved is their master is their king is their teacher it's a rabbi you are the son of god look at it from chapter one of john he confirmed it that is the, so that means people know when they look at jesus this is this is a different teacher he teach with authority he teach differently this one is different he doesn't teach like the scribes and the pharisees he teach not just of letter he teach not just of, of the law he teach not just of commandment he teach so that people who are sick will be healed those who are in sin will be saved those who are supposed to be stoned because of their sin will be restored to righteousness look at this jesus is the son of god he called me he knew me he called me even he know he understand that even hi he did he know this thing is the son of god so we are looking at it today and we are looking at that chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 from 1 to 3 Be, the, and seeing the multitude he went up to a mountain and was said his disciple come unto him look at it look at that look at that analysis of that place he was sensitive to the multitude he saw the multitude say ah I need to do something. You need to strategize. So he advanced. Preacher of the gospel, we need to advance. We need to be strategizing. And when we're advancing in the ministry as an evangelist, as a preacher, a witness, we need to actually strategize. And he, he advanced. He got set. He said before the disciple came, he was set. He was reorganized. Hallelujah. He said, he was set. And you saw it there. He said, he was set. And he said, come on to him. He was organized. He wasn't going up and down, running up and down. He was saying to know what he would present. So he had good, he had, he was he prepared for good presentation to the disciple. Hallelujah. Then he took action. He advanced up, he go to the mountain. Where will I be able to do it properly? Let me go to the mountain top. How do you how do you take action? Don't let don't sit down there. Take action to preach the gospel. Take action to tell the world about Jesus. Look at the multitude. They are dying. They are actually in in, in the pernicious way and go to go into hell. Take a position to take action. He took position and was positioned. Hallelujah. He was set. He was positioned. 
open his mouth, it was audible. He didn't say, uh, my Jesus is inside, I won't talk it out. He opened his mouth to speak it and he know that if you too open your mouth, the Spirit of God will feel it. Open your mouth everywhere you are. And another thing is that he was, what is his concern? Look at it in that place. And he opened his mouth and taught them sin. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The concern of Jesus is those who humble myself, concrete art, those who are there, if you can humble yourself, he said, yours is the kingdom of God. People in spirit, those who know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not rich, I don't have what I need, I'm not proud, I don't have Jesus, I don't have the truth, I'm still wretched in my sin. Those people, he concerned about them to take them to the kingdom of God. Because he said, if you are if you are the one that humble and you are poor in the spirit, it takes you to the kingdom of God. By the grace of God, we see an example of the concern of Jesus. He showed it again in John chapter 3, I read from 1 to 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Like, look at it, he confirm me that he's a teacher, is a rabbi come from God. And thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do this miracle that thou doeth except God be with him. Who can do this? Who can call people and they are following him like this? Who can call people that are fishing and they live fishing and they follow him, preaching the word? Who can live? Who can call a tax collector and he actually live that publican work where he's making a lot of money and follow? Look at that. Who is the person that can actually turn water into wine when people don't even have enough? No aqua, nothing. Nothing added. No additive, no, no additive added, nothing. There's no sedimentation, nothing happened. And this is this is different. You're a rabbi, come for God. You have done so many miracles. Even when you speak to the to the blind, they see. Ah, you must be you must be different. So he said, Jesus now answered him. This is my concern. Look at what Jesus said, so that you know the concern of Jesus for the world, for the multitude, for you and me. He said, Jesus said, very very I see unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The concern of Jesus is to see the kingdom of God, to get to heaven. If you are not converted, if you are not born again, if no matter how religious, no matter the church you go, no matter the prayer five times, how many times you go to one Jerusalem or somewhere you go to in the in the part of the Middle East and you do whatever you do without being born again, coming from sin to righteousness, acknowledging Jesus, there's no heaven. There's no other name. It's only through Jesus who said, you must be born again. There's no, it's, it's written. It's clear. If you are not born again, ask Jesus. Talk to Jesus. He can do it. Call to Jesus. Today is a day of your salvation. Because today is nearer. Jesus is coming back and is calling you for salvation. So come to him today and he will save your soul. We are looking at three points before we can, before, as we are praying. I can't say before we pray. Three points to pray. Number one, the creativity of Jesus, our Redeemer. Number two, the clinical Jesus, the Rabbi. Number three, the Christ, uh, Christ justifying reasoning. Hallelujah. He reasoned, he reasoned in a manner to justify those people. And he showed us the way of justification while reasoning, while talking, while discussing. Let's look at it in that our study in, in Matthew chapter 5. Open the Bible with me. Don't just don't be careless about opening the Bible. The Bible is good. As you look at it, you will learn more. The more you look, the more you the more you look at it, you search it, you see more things. Even open, you see and see. Look at verse 1 and see the multitude. Why do I, why don't I see the multitude as he's singing? He went up into a mountain, and when he said, his disciple came unto him. Look at it. Then the creativity of Jesus, the Redeemer, he went to him. He, he saw the multitude, he strategized, he created. He, and you see, a minister of God, a preacher, so winners, Christians will be creative. Turn the, look at what Jesus did so that you see that Jesus is very creative in chapter 4. John chapter 4, 5 to 7. I read. And John chapter 4, I read from verse 5 on to 7. Then comment he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son. Look at the creativity. He need, he now went to that, that ground. He now said, and Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat on the way. It was about the sixth hour. He didn't just sit anywhere. Look at the creativity. Jesus, he sat on the way. Somebody will come and fetch water. Hallelujah. I love, that's why you allow the Holy Spirit an evangelist. 
He didn't just sit anywhere. When I sit on this well, somebody will come and I will turn it into the word of God. Let's go to the second point without wasting time. The clinical Jesus, the rabbi, clinical, that is effective. Effective, he does it well. When you say clinical, somebody that do it well, he finish wet, he, he fashion it well, he actually, he use it, he apply the thing where clinical Jesus, the rabbi. Look at Matthew chapter 5, our study. In verse 2, he said, he opened his mouth and taught them saying. Look at this. This clinical, he opened his mouth and was audible. You can hear what he's saying. He didn't keep quiet and be used, talking like dumb and be waiting. It's not that he doesn't know what to do. It's clinical. Look at Matthew chapter 7 and let's look at it. Let, look at what God in verse 29. For he taught them as one having authority, not at the scribes. Hallelujah. He, op he opened his mouth to teach them, not just any teaching, not teaching like other people. If you are a child of God, listen to me. If you are converted, if you have the Holy Spirit, you'll be clinical in your approach to evangelism. You'll be effective, efficient. You'll be able to understand how do I place it? Look at it. He went to that. If you read the story of that woman in John chapter 4, you see how clinical Jesus was. Hallelujah. The approach, the creativity, the way he brought him in, the way he approached him, the way he told the story of his life, the, the word of knowledge he spoke to the woman, and the way the woman has to go out and call them in. You need to pray, God, make me a clinical preacher. Make me a clinical, a clinical, a clinical evangelist, a clinical preacher of the world, a clinical person that go out there when I'm giving my tract to people. Let, let it be clinical. Let it be effective. Let it be the one with actually creativity. He said in that remark, he said, and, the, and he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes, not as those who read letter, who went to school, who went to theology, who went to seminary, who had certificate, no. He taught as with authority. Hallelujah. And he told you, behold, I give unto you power. And again, he said, he said, and you shall receive power. Power is the one that gives you authority. He said, and you shall receive power. You shall be witnesses. Before you go out there, guard the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, and you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, shall be witnesses unto me. Look at it. So be a witness. You need the power to be clinical. Let's go to the last prayer point today, and, and that is Christ justifying reasoning. What does, it's good for us as minister of God to justify people. Bring them to Christ so that they will live by faith and they by grace and they will be justified and they will be part of the kingdom with us. Don't, it's, it's not a message of condemnation. Jesus, I did not come to the world to condemn the world, but the world told me that they might be saved. I'm not saying you should not warn them. Don't get me wrong. Warn them. When people are caught in the fourth, call them with love. Bring them to cry. But you need to know that open rebuke is better than sacred law. Tell the truth. Speak it loudly. Jesus actually rebuked Peter. It's not that you can't rebuke. He rebuke even the Pharisees called. He said, woe unto you because they are actually pernicious they are obstinate. They are actually stubborn in their way of, of perdition to hell. But they want them to come to Jesus. Look at John the Baptist too. He spoke to them. He helped them. He called them. You. Who, who wants you to come from? The blood of vipers. He called them. But notwithstanding, we should actually look. As when we call them, we will talk to them. We scold them. We speak to God to them. Now bring them with love to Christ. Look at the justifying reasoning in chapter, in verse 3. Matthew 5 verse 3. He said, blessed are the Poor in spirit for theirs, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. The concern of Jesus to justify people to heaven. Poor in spirit. But it's the kind of the category of people. Let's see what the Bible says to us and let's read from the word of God in Isaiah 66, verse 2. And all those things are mine. My mind, my heart at me, and those things have been had been, said the Lord. But to this man will I look. Look at who Jesus will look at. Even to him that is poor and of concrete spirit and treble at my word. Can you see? If somebody is arrogant in the spirit, arrogant is not poor in the spirit. That's not when you say, I'm rich, but you are poor. You think you see, you are blind. God is looking for such person that humble himself. Say, oh Lord, I'm poor, help me. Poor in spirit. Who want to actually know the law? Who want to know that Jesus helped me? He raised his hand. Jesus raised me up. Help me. Those are the ones he's looking for. Let's look at it in Psalm 51 and see an explanation and that, that the psalmist is giving ex, uh, in the Holy Spirit. Psalm 51 verse 17. The sacrifice of the Lord is a broken spirit. Like a poor spirit. Broken spirit. A broken and concrete, concrete act. Oh God, thou will not despise. Do you have a poor spirit? Are you ready for the Lord? 
Are you arrogant in your spirit? Are you saying you have a life? You know very well today is calling you. Jesus is calling you to salvation. Calling you, if you say you are saved, why am I still behaving like this? So let God touch your heart. Take the first the first skin and remove it and put and lay and take the stony heart, take it away and put the heart of flesh of flesh. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much. Please, as we go on today, take control in the mother God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.